Hello and welcome to Camp Xbox. The Tony Hawk franchise is one that defined my childhood and many others. In the late 90s and early 2000s, every kid was interested in skateboarding, BMX, and various other extreme sports. It was a mix of sportsmanship, danger, and the idea that you could pick up something as simple as a skateboard and have that much freedom. Video games of the era were full of extreme sports, but the Tony Hawk games were the pinnacle of this trend. I've covered all of them up until Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4, so now it's time to dive into Tony Hawk's Underground. Join me as I talk about its development history, review it, and discuss its lasting impact. But let's go ahead and get things started. The Tony Hawk series was insanely popular by the year 2002. The first three games were major hits, and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 was set to hit the market at the end of 2002. Even during the development of Tony Hawk 4, what was known then as Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 was in development by series mainstay Neversoft. One of the biggest changes upon release of Tony Hawk 4 was the open-ended feel of the game. Up until that point, Tony Hawk consisted of smaller levels where you had to complete certain goals within a short amount of time. In Tony Hawk 4, you were given larger levels that you could spend an unlimited amount of time in to complete goals. Still playing as professional skaters, you could explore these areas to your heart's desire. This was something that was praised and further boosted the hype for Tony Hawk's Underground, since that game would take that concept and push it even further. Even Neversoft president Joel Jewett, while talking to IGN, stated that Tony Hawk's Underground was an adventure game. I remember reading about this game and being extremely hyped up for it. It was a Tony Hawk game where you could play as your own character and go through an entire story as the skater. They were even changing the franchise's name to show that this was something completely different. With little turnaround time after 4, Published by Activision and developed by Neversoft, Underground was released a little more than a year later on October 27th, 2003 for most major consoles, including the Xbox version that I am reviewing today. Getting into the story, already we have one of the biggest changes in the Tony Hawk series just by me telling you about a story. This time, a Tony Hawk game was going to display locales with a plot through line an idea that I think is effective and a really fun way to keep the series updated rolling through the next generation. Tony Hawk's Underground starts you off in New Jersey with your personally customized character, and within this story is your rise to fame, from a street skateboarder to touring all across the world with your skating team. It seems so simple talking about it, but the places this story goes and the fun elements that it has fit a skate punk aesthetic with a classic Shakespearean tale of betrayal. Of course, I'm just kidding with that last statement, but it is a fun story and it complements the game very well and it remains memorable. There are going to be some spoilers ahead, but I do think they're important to the story and how great this game is, but if you've never played this one before, go ahead and skip to the next chapter. Just know the story here is surprisingly amazing. I think what makes this game's story work so well is its villain, Eric Sparrow. Funny enough to me, and what most people might not realize, is he's one of the most recognizable villains of the sixth generation, at least to me. Eric is downright diabolical. At first, when starting out in New Jersey, you just think he's some crazy kid that sets fire to drug dealers' cars. But eventually, it comes to light how much of a psychopath he is betraying you to get into skating competitions, blaming a tank hijacking in Moscow on you, and, in the game's most pivotal moment, taking a video of you performing a huge trick over a helicopter and claiming it was him. Of course, this is all done with light humor, but it's so easy to hate this guy, and your pursuit to take him down in the game's finale is both fun and extremely rewarding. I'm surprised on my most recent replay just how well done your character arc is pulled off. They took what could have been a plain, rags to riches story and gave it a unique and silly spin. The pro skaters are all here too and have more personality, creating a fun cast of characters to tour across the world with. Now these scenes are the in-between cutscenes and the tasks in the world usually vary on how connected to the plot they are, but I think it's a good connector 
to get in some excellent gameplay in between. At its core, this Tony Hawk entry plays similarly to its predecessors. For the most part, you will be on your skateboard, roaming areas, finding spots to trick on. From ramps for using grab tricks, to roads for manuals and rails to grind, all of which earn you points for high scores or just getting the best possible combo. It's the smoothest playing it's been so far in the franchise, and the speed captured here is absolutely perfect. Seamlessly blending moves and combos feels great, and there's a nice rush whenever you pull off an incredible feat. I love that they maintain reverts in this game, which allows you to seamlessly continue combos in bowls. What makes this one stand out is the ability to hop off your board. With just a press of a button, your character can walk around. This can be used to make your combos longer, or get to hard to reach locations. It's an element that actually adds a little spark to the gameplay that's really fun. Sometimes you know you are about to ruin a combo, but hopping off the board for a second will save the day. Movement can be a little janky when hopping around, especially from roof to roof, but it adds a fun sense of exploration to the game. The one thing added in this game that is really unnecessary though is the cars. Some levels feature cars and goals tied to them, Usually they're as simple as picking up items or getting to a goal fast. I don't think the controls on these sections are well put together, and honestly, it's just unneeded in a skateboarding game. Luckily, these car sections make up maybe 10 minutes of the total playtime, and it really doesn't damage the game in any way. In Underground, you move from city to city, and each one is based on real places, ranging from Tampa, Florida, to New York City, and even Moscow. Each city will have multiple goals for you to complete, and when you finish a certain amount of them, you can continue to the next section of the story. I'd say almost all of these locales in this game are very well-crafted levels, and some are some of the best in the series. One that stands out to me is Vancouver, Canada. It's not necessarily the most vibrant level, but there's something about the amount of verticality that they achieved transferring over huge concrete slabs and going into the underground hockey rink all feel great to flow through. It's what I love most about Tony Hawk, which is skating through an urban landscape and finding the best possible lines. I also think New Jersey is a good spot too, though somewhat small. It packs a punch with the amount of urban decay to ride on. This level showcases the best amount of off skateboarding ability out of any level here. Each of these levels has its own strengths, and all of them were fun to skate through. One thing I thought was interesting was the ability to fast travel to the different goals within the levels, which is nice when trying to hunt one down. Most of the goals are simple and well done, and are not too difficult on the game's normal difficulty. Some of them will ask you to combo, land certain moves, or get high scores. It's fairly run-of-the-mill stuff, but it's part of what makes the Tony Hawk formula addicting. These goals are tried and true and continue to be fun even within the new context of a story-based game. The story-based nature of this one is what keeps this game strong and the type of game you can enjoy for hours on end. It adds a personal touch to progression that makes it feel like there's more to everything than just getting scores. Customization works hand in hand with some excellent character making, skateboard building, and even park building tools. There's a lot of tools here to make the skating experience closer to what you want out of it. It's crazy how huge of a leap this whole experience is from 4 to Underground in terms of embracing a plot. Usually franchises would stumble here, but the gameplay and plot work so perfectly hand in hand that it never stops being fun. It keeps the fun factor strong, and if you love playing Tony Hawk, it's going to continue being a fun time. Graphically, this game looks solid and presents a nice upgrade from Tony Hawk 4. It also helps that on the original Xbox, this game runs at 720p and has widescreen support, making it look excellent for its time. The environments are well thought out and detailed. I do think some of the models can be a little lacking. The car models have a funky look to them, and characters other than the leads have pretty bad lip sync issues but it's really not ruining the whole experience. The true graphical experience of a Tony Hawk game, even one with a story, is its environments. From the heavily concrete streets of New York to the trashy alleys of Tampa, Neversoft represents their visions of these locales with a solid style, looking crisp and well put together on the Xbox. 
I always love seeing games pushing this console to its fullest potential, and while this might not be going for realism or anything, it still has a great high definition look that makes all of the environments pop out. The look of the customization is excellent here, and the added depth of elements to put you into your character's shoes makes the game have a personal, graphical touch that I really appreciate. It's Tony Hawk from the sixth generation, so I think it's almost a guarantee that the soundtrack is excellent. It does support the ability for you to listen to your own custom soundtracks burned to the Xbox hard drive, but the music itself is great on its own. If you like punk, they have popular acts like Sublime and Rise Against, but still have a solid mix of underground stuff to round out a robust selection. I was surprised by the amount of underground rap that they had with Quasimodo, Cannibal Ox, and Deltron. If you like rap, check out the stuff here. But the weirdest pull in here is the amount of Kiss music. This connects to a secret stage and Gene Simmons being an unlockable character. To me, it's kind of odd, but I think it's a fun addition, and the Kiss tracks honestly are a fun touch. As far as sound effects go, it's all solid, and grinds and jumps all sounding on par for what you would expect. The voice acting from the lead and Eric are both great. The pro skaters aren't amazing though, but I won't fault them, at least they showed up. Voice acting isn't their main job, I just like that they're here. In conclusion, Tony Hawk's Underground is the best in the series so far. The mix of great arcade-style gameplay with a long-form story melds very well here. Where I personally don't feel like the open-world aspect of the game works great in 4, this one takes lessons from that and makes it work here. It's cartoonishly fun with an excellent villain and a story with a personal touch. It has some of my favorite places to skate in the series, and one of the best soundtracks in the series. All around, it's an excellent Tony Hawk title, and if you haven't experienced it, I think this is a solid entry point. But I want to foreshadow a little, and I might even think the next one is even better than this. It was truly an amazing time in skateboarding video game history. On my original Xbox ranking list, which I kind of updated a little bit recently, Tony Hawk's Underground is going to go really high for me at number 4. I do think it's better than Ultimate Spider-Man, really, really close race, and then Project Gotham Racing I think is a little bit more replayable, another really good game. I'm getting to the point where these in my top 10, it's so hard to pick one over the other, and it feels a little arbitrary, but as of right now, these are the top 10. And remember, this is just my opinion. If you agree or even disagree, be sure to let me know in the comments because I think everybody's opinion is important. And now moving on into the lasting impact with the public, Tony Hawk's Underground continues to be a very popular title and was very well received at release. Selling extremely well, it garnered a Platinum Hits release on Xbox. This game became a staple among other kids growing up. It was commonly found in my friends' houses for PS2. Critics were highly positive about it at the time, with the game receiving mostly 10s and 9s across the board. According to Metacritic, the PS2 version holds a score of 90, while the Xbox version holds an 85, both indicating very high regard. Official Xbox Magazine gave it an Editor's Choice Award with a 9 out of 10, although they were a bit disappointed about the missing face replication that the PS2 version received. And people still play this game to this day. Modding communities like Thug Pro enable players to experience all these levels online today. Video game apps like Backlogged have it rated with an average of 3.9 out of 5, and Glitchwave has it ranking as the 366th best game of all time on that website. Tony Hawk's Underground is still loved and very much well worth playing to this day. But that wraps it up for today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as it helps me out in the algorithm, subscribe to keep up with the retro Xbox content, Share any Tony Hawk memories below in the comments, I would love to hear from you. And a very special shout out to my camp counselors and campers. Thank you so much for all your support, it really helps me out. But I'll see you here next time at Camp Xbox.